and we lost the signal. Ah. Okay, so we're back. Um, this is 3921 week 8 lecture 3. So today is the last quote-unquote official lecture in the sense starting week 9. We'll just have um, in-class like office hours. So I'll be in class. I, I do expect you to come if, you're, if you haven't finished the project. So come on in and we'll bring your laptops and we'll work on the project. So ideally, you should finish your project by week nine. I mean, you have week 10 to do it. So keep week 10 as like wrap cleaning up documentation presentation. Like I said, I'll email you actually after class about uh, presentation time. When was our exam scheduled? Week 11 Monday from eight to 10, was it? So I'll try to book a room, like ideally like S312 or like the S340 that night like nice new lab with the projector. So we'll go from there. So today we're going to discuss the SD card and the group which is groups which are working on the SD card, they've done a good job of almost getting it to go. So as far as the hardware is concerned, it's pretty straightforward except, um, so actually there was a question raised of the, all, the data type alt underscore U32. So if you actually look at it, so let me open this up and it is being used here. So here it is, right? You have to use this header file. And then you get access to Alt U8, etc. right? Now, if you look at your base addresses, they're all 32 bits, right? So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight hex digits, 32 bits, okay? Because your NIOS is a 32 bit risk architecture, that's all right. But anyway, as far as the hardware is concerned, uh, here are the pin names that you have to assign in the assignment editor or the pin planner, because uh, these pins are not in your DE1 pin assignments file. If you're using the SD card, we can actually look at it just to check. Right. Where is it? Do, 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 do. Here's DE1. So lab exercises, pin assignments. And so what you do is you go into your Quartus pin planner and just assign these pins. For us, here it is. Okay, this column. And it's all in the documentation for the SD card. So I'm not, uh, well, you can look through it, it's not here. Okay, so that's number one. So the hardware is pretty straightforward. Okay. The software part, so let's look at that. So it basically gives you this Alt UP SD card Avalon interface, all right? And actually, let me, do I have any? No, I, I know that. I'm just trying to see if I have a project which I can open up and show you exactly where it is. I don't have a project on here. But anyway, it'll be under uh, HAL Drivers Inc. All right, that's where it'll be, these files. But once you do generate the SD card hardware, you'll get this file. So let's look at actually, yesterday in lab, there were questions on how to access these functions. So let's look at it generically in, with the SD card as an example. So let's look at this function, right? So basically what did, what is being done here, a pointer to this data type has been declared, okay? And the name of SD address is not your device name, okay? It's the starting memory address of your SD card device, which can be found in system.h, right? So how do you know this is what you have to use? That is the name of the SD address and not the name of the device. Well, let's just look in the documentation. So hardware abstraction layer functions, uh, let's see. Open dev, but then, okay. So I'm uh, looking at this, right? So let's look at this function. So I want you to relabel this because the first one actually asks you for the name of the instance, okay? It's not the memory address. So I don't know if you use the memory address technically it says like you have to use the name of the SD card IP core. Is that what you used or? Okay, so just be careful, right? So in this case, uh, I guess uh, I don't have the SD card to test this. I would use the name of the device. Okay, not the starting uh, memory address. It might work because they may have some like error checking and whatever, fixing it, but the domain is not correct, so you don't want to use it, right? For example, Connor's group for the audio, you have to use the name of the device, not the memory address, right? Depending on what function you call. 
So I'll record this. But anyway, having done that, uh, what they do, the next is they check if the SD card is present. And before this, what I would do is I would do another check. Uh, let's see. Returns null when the device, when the field device name doesn't exist. Okay. So I would do a null check here. If if SD card is null, right? Then I would say uh, alt. If you want to use alt printf, okay, which is what alt stdio gives, it'll use much less code footprint as opposed to printf. But alt printf has very little functionality. Right? So yeah, you can use printf since you're using SD RAM. But let's say you're using on-chip memory, you can never get your code to fit if you use printfs and you do something interesting. Right. So I'll printf uh, unable to open SD card device. And for example, I don't know if alt printf accepts strings. Okay. I'm not sure. It does? Okay, awesome. Huh? Alt printf? So Ezra informs that it does, so just use all printfs. The reason why I'm doing this is this is very useful, right, in the sense constant char name. Uh, so let's say a pointer to type character is can be represented as a string, right? So in the sense, if you just put your SD, I don't know what they called it, called device name from your system.h, okay? And if you get garbage here, that means your a, your percentage is not working right, okay, or B, you're just, your device name is just incorrect. So this is all you debugging tips. Make sense? Okay, so that's that. And then, uh, so they're checking if SD card is present. This is a nice check, so let's see. Where, where is present? Read, write, present. There it is. So it returns a data type of type bool, and bool is true or false, okay? And that's what they check, right? So if it's false, please insert SD card, and they wait till... Uh, did you check if this works? Okay, awesome. So it's very... Looks like, okay, uh, over the last two years, looks like the university program SD card code is very robust, right? For those of you who are planning to use SD card in the future, I would recommend that over Terrasics and Choose. But SD card is pretty slow, right? No. Yeah. Okay. It's usually pretty slow because it's basically a flash-based serial interface. Like in the sense, it's it's kind of like flash memory. Right? It's a little slow, but it's the only thing. Uh, raw, like uh, that's the only if if any issue with it. Okay. So let's see, then they check if it's FAT16. And finally, okay, so let's address this, right? But so far, is this clear? This is all standard um, C code. So let's look at this. So Alt F up SD card find first. And let's look at that function. Find next. Here it is. So directory to search through file name, right? So basically, uh, so relative to the root directory, he's saying this is a char pointer, okay? So what I would do is I would try this. So relative to root, right? So relative to the root, so the root directory is usually forward slash, okay? So relative to the root means create a directory called temp, okay? Try a forward slash. I mean, do they have example code or no? Okay. Okay. So then let's try to look at, try to find that through the Altera documentation, right? So basically, again, I went into 13.0, IP, university program. Um, I think where was it? Memory. Alter up SD card interface, and let's see. Here's how. Let's see if they have something in here. Uh, here's the source. 
this may not help okay let's see what this is but it is in the c file let's find it what is it called alt up do close that let me just copy this F. So basically, the rule of thumb here is that this char pointer is basically a string. Okay? And the reason is, well, let's do this. Let's look at this. Oops. This. You could do this, right? You could declare strings like this. You could say char string is hello world. Right? Actually, just do this, right? You could do that. I forgot if you're going to use an escape sequence or not. Say so you can't, right? You could do that. Or you could even do char, let's call the string one, let's call the string two. Um, max size is uh, hello world and terminate with a null character, okay? In the sense, you can define max size as anything you want. In the sense, let's say you do. 500, okay? But as long as you terminate with the null, that indicates end of string. So that's ANSI C standard, so anything after this is ignored. So try these, okay? This is how you declare strings, and this works why? Because the name of an array is a pointer to the first element. Okay? This is actually a pointer. So this is equivalent to this, okay? So maybe, now I think about equivalence, I would do that. I would actually put a null in there explicitly. It's always good to be explicit, okay? So this is a null character. I mean, this doesn't work, right? So you need to escape it, right? So let me just check when we have time. And then let me, well, it's, I want to. No, I don't want the hardware. Like, I mean, you, just, you can just go through this. Here it is. This is not the root directory. Uh, dot, look through the root directory. And then, so let's just use this, okay? So to fix this, let's just look through the root directory. You need to send in a string, yes? So let me go in here and fix this. So I think initially you had this. That's not a string, right? Right there, okay? Try that. And the name of the file is... Uh, uh, test.c, something, okay? Now, does it return a 16-bit uh, unsigned integer? Let's take a look. Result of the operation. Okay, so th this just returns the result of the operation, right? It doesn't return the file name, okay? Because that's what I thought. Like, you can't really, you just get, uh, this is not the name of the file. Let's say uh, result of find first, okay? Uh, so you could say, you could, if result of find first equals, I think zero is success, right? Then I would say printf success, okay? That's what I would do. So what I was going to check, whoops was ANSI C null character. I think it's, come on. As it's loading up, uh, it's a control character with the value zero, okay? Uh, 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 here it is. So yeah, it is backslash zero. But anyway, so let's see. This is the result. And another thing is, as far as so as far as C is concerned, okay, this is just a, uh, it's not, it's just a ANSI C standard thing. You always declare all your variables before you call any functions, just as an information note. This is a C plus plus standard. So your GC, your compilers are smart enough to figure that out. But let's say somebody used a pure ANSI C compiler. This will flag an error. 
So what I would do, I mean, you don't have to do this right now in your future code. I would declare all the necessary variables before you call any functions. Just a, a convention note. But anyway, so this is how you would find this test.c. Once you find it, let's say you want to print the name of the file. Uh, let's find the next. Is there any like name of file? Probably not. So you got right. F close is present. Okay, that's all they had. You said there are a lot more functions in here. Okay. This fat 16 is present, open, dev, oh, these ones. Copy file record name to string. Okay. Yeah, this create file. File named extension, friend, first empty record, first empty record, yeah. I'm seeing if they have any like print file name. Find file in directory, so I just did it as a bool. It's actually coded very well. So it gets clusters. And I, fat16 file name to uppercase. Mm -hmm. uh, let's see, look for fat16. Check for dosfat. Yeah, it doesn't have anything. What I would do is... Yeah, this should itself should be enough. Like if you just find it in return zero, file found. Okay. File percent s. So you could do this, right? Try this. Assuming you create a test.c in your SD card, your computers all have the SD card reader, right? So just make sure it's FAT16 format. I mean, that's all it is. So just create a test.c. Right in that print hello world or something inside there, right? So I would do this. So char s1 test.c, null character, s1. You see that? No quotes because it's, this, yeah, it's already character string, okay? And then printf, now what you can do is file percent s found. So you want to use s1, okay? So I'm saving this onto my memory stick, so I'll give it to you, right? So take a look at this. Uh, I don't know if this is called, this might flag an error. Uh, Alt printf below might flag an error since SD card device name is undefined, okay? So what we can, so that's about it for the SD card interface, but then let's talk about the, um, concept of C pointers, because a lot of you are using it. So in that case, what I'll do is, let me eject this guy. And I believe, come on. Yep. I don't need that. So I believe I have min GCC on here check min gw uh, let's see msys 1.0 yeah i do home directory swami okay so i do i'm going to use min gw i think i demoed this like in the beginning of the quarter this is a open source c compiler for your for windows it's called minimalist minimalist uh GCC for Windows. So I would recommend you Google search for MinGW and install it and play around with it if you want to learn how to program in C. So let me go to MinGW, go into the shell, and basically once you get the MinGW shell, it goes into this directory, okay? Uh, MinGW is 1.0 home, your username. And now what I can do is in here I can create, so let's start playing around with this, okay? Plenty of time, unless you have any other questions. Okay, so let's, let's look at hardcore C programming. Oh, well, it's not hardcore C programming, it's whatever. Uh, strings, string example, dot C. Okay, yeah, and then. Wow, my tablet's slow. Doesn't like string example. Hopefully it didn't crash my uh, Windows Explorer. Uh, 
Maybe it crashed it because I'm accessing it from the shell. Let's try that. Uh, let me pause the lecture. This is not looking good. Starting again. So yes, Windows Explorer did crash, and it's probably because I was accessing this folder from the MinGW console. But anyway. GW shell, there it is. Okay, so in here, come on, dude. There, you can use GCC, no input files, that's fine. Uh, so let's just do a quick example program. IO.h, and the string functions are in string.h, okay? There are a lot of string functions you can look at uh, in main void. So return zero. Oh, have you heard of char argument count, char argument vector? So this is how you pass command line arguments into the C program. Yeah, so let's just look at this. Right? Since you haven't heard of it, so what I'll do is I'm running out of battery. So let me pause this and let's look at this. Okay, continuing. So basically, uh, let's see. Uh, the K and R, C, okay. So Kernigan and Ritchie is a, to, to do the C programming language. Is The C programming language is a book written by Kernigan and Ritchie. I think, Connor, you got it, right? Was it very useful? Yeah, so it's uh, that's, why, that's how I would use the book as, so to repeat what Connor said, it's a really good reference. I would not use this book to learn C from, personally, that's my opinion, right? Some, I learned C from this book. Initially, it's very difficult. It's like written at a very high level, but once I got used to like programming and stuff, this book is like a Bible. This book is readily available at large bookstores, blah, blah, blah. I thought there was a free, they put it online for free, apparently not, but, huh? Okay, so... Let's just look at, basically I'm looking for uh, command line arguments in C. The, this book has a very good, uh, uh, let's see, C allows a program to obtain, obtain command line arguments. So let's look at the wiki books and see if it's useful. I can quickly tell you. Yeah, so it is useful, right? So I'll take a look at this, but then let's do the experiment ourselves. Uh, let's see. So basically argument, it's. The way people read this is, and I screwed this up, I don't know why I call this char, this is int, okay? So, integer argument count, the count of the number of arguments on the command line, so the minimum value of this is one, your name of the program itself. Argument vector is a pointer to a pointer, okay? In other words, to pointer to an array of cha chars. So that's why, and this contains strings, okay, uh, basically char pointers of your actual command line arguments. So if you look at this code, I just noticed, you can also do this. This is fine, right? So let's just take a look at this. In the sense, uh, let's print. First, let's see how argument count works. Number of command line arguments is going to be percent %u unsigned, okay? Argument count. So it's kind of cool. So let's do uh, GCC. Example.c, output a string example. Okay, done, no. So execute in the current, so now tab completion string example. Cannot execute binary file, that's not good. Oh, wait a minute, it's Windows, right? Example. Okay, it's not Dell. No, it's Unix. It's an RM. Yeah. Remove. Hopefully this works. Bad file number. That's not good. So let's try this from Windows. Oh man. Okay, test count works. So how did I compile test count? So test count. Okay, that works. 
So let's see, GCC compile example.c example.exe Okay, that's not good. So I'm screwing something up. Uh, let's see, hello world. So I need that. Let's see, let me take this out. Maybe it doesn't like command line arguments. Uh oh. Alright, so let me pause the lecture. So like Peter observed, and like it says here, there's no slash hyphen C, that's just for compilation. Okay. Actually, that's the Unix switch. So that's why I was using it. So there is no hype hyphen C. Anyway, so let's get back to our, so this is working. So let's have, play around with this again, integer argument count, char argument vector, number of command line arguments, percent u, argument count, let's go back in here, Thing is annoying. Yeah. Oh, uh, let's see. So test count has been added for my. Let me add my string example as well to my firewall program. There. Yeah, number of command line arguments one. Okay. So what happens if I do this? It should ideally return two. Beautiful, right? Three. How many? One, two, three, four, five. Okay. So it's very powerful, right? In the sense, it's like. It's basically using an anti C, I don't know if it's actually anti C standard. It's using variable linked argument lists. Okay, that's what it's using. So now let's actually print all this. Okay. These command line arguments are stored in an uh, pointer to a pointer. Okay. Argument vector right here. So let's print them. Uh, command line argument to a loop. Okay. I, okay, for i equals zero, i is less than what? Yes, Connor is exactly right. Org c, okay. I plus plus. Yes. Okay, so let's see if this makes sense. This definitely makes sense. It's unsigned integer, okay? Now, you have a pointer to a pointer, okay? So basically, my array indices start at zero, but once I access element zero, that's char pointer, which is a string. Is that clear? Again, the domain and the range, right, of functions, it's the exact concept here. So the range of this guy is char pointer, which is compatible with percent s. Okay. And the name of an array is a pointer to the first element. So that's why I have a pointer to a pointer. Make sense? And again, I keep emphasizing practice. This is how you learn how to do C. Okay. The microcontroller programming is a very, very niche application of the C programming language or even programming in general. So you really have to do all this first, okay? This is, this is not hardcore programming, this is getting into programming. Right? So let's just see what happens. Okay, let's see. Uh, 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 
So what's wrong here? I forgot a new line, right? It's not really clean. So let's fix that. Come on, man. There. Okay, command line argument zero is the name of the file itself, right? One, two, three, four. Okay, so this is an example of string manipulation using command line arguments. Any questions? So again, practice all this, like even next week once you're done with the project, it's a good idea to write uh, C code and a really good, so if you really want to learn C, you would actually use Kernigan and Ritchie's book, right? And go through all the exercises. I don't know if Connor, you've been going through them, if you have time. So, yeah, so over the summer or breaks, just this is how you learn programming. Just do like a couple of problems like every day. They're not easy, but you can ask Connor. They get like pretty difficult. That book is like a hardcore book. And uh, it's, again, it's a good book to have. Any programmer should have it. So it's called the K and R book. Okay, all right. So that's about it for actually 3921. So starting Monday, I would ex I expect you to actually be in lecture. So bring your laptops, and uh, so you have two more weeks to wrap up the project, weeks nine and ten. But like I said, finish it by week nine because almost I think pretty much all of you, a couple of you are done, but the rest of you are almost done. Right? So don't slack off now. Just get it done. Yeah. All right. Yeah, that's about it.